I came up with this question for you guys. Check this out. Here we have these four choices, and let me tell you guys that only one of them is not prime. And of course, we're going to find that out. Mm. And did you guys also notice that they are actually in the same form as well? I will tell you guys what's so interesting about that form, but that will be later on. For now, please pause the video and try this first. Okay, I trust you guys actually pause the video and solve this. And um, before I tell you guys what the answer is though, let's take a look at the screen right here. As you can see, the majority of you guys said the answer is D because it doesn't look like a prime, okay? But let me tell you, that's actually not correct. In fact, none of them look like a prime, or well, maybe they all look like prime, but anyway though, the answer is C. This is actually the only one that's actually not prime. Well, let's talk about this first. Why isn't this prime? If your number is not prime, of course, that means we can factor it. And in this situation, of course, you can work that out, and the answer will be 2021. And can you factor 2021? Yes. And you should have done that in New Year already. If you didn't do it, then <laughs> you are like half a year late. Seven months late anyway. Um, yeah. But let me tell you though, it's actually easier if you factor this as how this. I think it's easier, right? So this is my approach. Check this out. Well, here we have a 44, and here we have 44, and here we have 41, right? Imagine if we can balance this. What I mean by that is, can we grab one from here and then put it here? Yeah. Can we grab one from here and put it here? I think so. And maybe if we do that, we can end up with all the terms having 43, right? So that will be my approach, and let's try if it works or not. So have a look. I'm going to first look at the 44 square as 44 times 44. And then, of course, this right here stays the same. So let's put down plus 44 and then plus 41. Next, I'm going to break down the 44 right here as 43 plus 1. All right. And then this right here is still multiplied by 44 and then plus 44 plus 41. Next, I would like to distribute the 44 here. So we get 43 times 44 plus this times that is 44. And then this 44 and then this 41. So far, so good. Now, check this out. This term right here has 43, which is very nice. Now, I'm going to grab one from here and then put it here. So this will become 43 and this will be 42, right? And now I'm going to do the same for this, grab one from here and put it here. Ladies and gentlemen, you will see that this right here becomes, here we have 43 times 44, and then plus 43 now, and then plus, this is also 43 now, and this right here, it's also 43. Very nice, because now everybody has 43 as a factor. So we can of course factor that out. So this becomes 43 all the way in the front, and then we will have 44 right here. Plus one, plus one, plus one. Of course, all together right here, this is just 47. So ladies and gentlemen, this right here is just equal to 43 times 47. So of course, this right here is not prime. Very cool. All right. Well, and as I told you guys earlier, this right here is in fact equal to 2021, which is this year. And I think now the question is, how about these numbers? How can we ensure that they are actually prime? Well, did you guys know how I did it when I was coming up with this question? Yes, I used Wolfram Alpha, of course. So I can just put this onto Wolfram Alpha and say, is this prime? And it says it's prime, so it has to be prime, right? Good. But anyway though, I will show you another method to actually ensure that this is prime. And this method works mm, when the number is not too big, all right? First off, this right here, if you work that out, you are going to get 2111. So that's the idea. You are going to work on the number first. Because we're not trying to factor, so we shouldn't be looking at this expression. And this is how the method works. And by the way, let me just tell you guys the name. This is called... This is how this method works. First, we're going to take the square root of that number, which is 2111. 
and this right here is approximately 45.9. Next, we are going to call out all the prime numbers that are less than this, and I'm going to write them down for you. First, we have 2, and then 3, and then 5, and then 7, and then 11, 13, 17, 19, and then continue, we have 23, 29, 31, 37, 41, and 43. These are the numbers that we have to check. What do we do? Well, just go ahead and ask yourself, does 2 go into 2111? And the answer to that is no. So, check that, right? Does 3 work? And again, it's no. You can either divide or use the deficiency tricks, right? Whatever you want. And then you continue, does 5 work? No. Does 7 work? No. No. No, 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 no. Therefore, by this method, if none of the prime works, then we can ensure that this right here is in fact prime. All right? So this is one of the ancient methods to test out if a number is prime or not. And you might be wondering, why don't we check primes that are bigger than 45.9, such as 53, such as 97? Well, here's the reason why. If you look at 2111, if we can factor this as a product of two numbers, A and B, well, the deal is that one of them must be smaller than the square root of itself, namely about 45.9. Let's say this right here is less than square root of 2111. First of all, why is this true? Imagine if both of them are greater than square root of 2111, then you will end up with a contradiction. Because if this is greater than this and this is also greater than that, you end up with 2111 is greater than itself. So that's not good. But anyway though, remember we can always prime factor. So if this right here is the prime factor, it must be less than this. And as you can see, just go ahead and test out all the primes less than that. And you see, if none of them works, then that means you cannot prime factor it. So that's pretty much the reason why. So did you like the question that we have today? If so, then you should check out the numbers three course from Brilliant. Brilliant is one of the best websites for math and science, and I've been a long-term user because of the variety of courses that they have. Currently, they have over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. These classes are designed to make fun and engaging, and I strongly believe that the best way to learn math is to actually do the math. And at Brilliant, they offer you the opportunity to practice the essentials in an interesting and engaging way. And let me tell you, they have beginner level of math courses and also advanced courses such as differential equations and quantum computing. I'm sure you will find something that you like. Plus, if you use the link in the description, brilliant.org slash black and repent, then you can enjoy a 20% off of the annual premium subscription. So go ahead and check them out. And thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. And now I will tell you the interesting part that I promised earlier. Well, if you look at all this, they are actually in the form of n squared plus n plus 41, right? Because for this right here, that's just the case when n is equal to 44, okay? And I would like to call this to be a n, so that way we can look at this as a sequence. And let me tell you, this sequence is super interesting. Why? Because this right here will actually give you prime when you plug in some n values. You ready? First, if you look at when n is equal to 0, we get 41, which is prime. And when n is equal to 1, we get 43, which is still prime. And when n is equal to 2, yes, that will give you prime. And in fact, you can plug in n values from 0 to 39. They will give you prime numbers. And that's super cool. And take a look. This is just a quadratic sequence. And you get 40 prime numbers in a row. So that's super interesting, isn't it? Well, let me tell you another reason I like this so much is that I like to use this as an example to show students that we cannot just plug in numbers and then just try to generalize or just try to prove a statement. Because, unfortunately, when n is equal to 40, plug in, we get 40 squared plus 40 plus 41, 
and you can do Huawei did earlier, but I will tell you this right here is unfortunately not prime anymore. So we really cannot just plug in numbers and just try to generalize or prove a statement. Yeah, this is a super cool example because we have 40 primes in a row, but it does not give you prime every single time. Okay, before we go, I have a question for you guys. 40 is the first positive number so that an doesn't give you a prime number. But what if n is negative? So the question is, we want to have n less than zero so that an is not prime. And have a look right here. You can just test this out real quick. If n is equal to negative 1, we get 41, that's prime. If n is equal to negative 2, you will still end up with prime. So this right here is not so easy to do. Think about it, right? We want the first negative number so that this right here does not give you a prime number. Leave your answer down below in the comment.